I tested my theory to measure skill in Trackmania. I faced mind-boggling challenges that required serious dedication. I've gathered some surprising results, and I'm about to reveal them all. What is skill? By definition, skill is the ability to do something well. Since Trackmania is a racing game, skill could be defined as the ability to do something faster. Objectively, the records you set will rank you on a list of players. And way too many factors can interfere with your records, such as the map style, different time spent on that record, or even luck. I wanted to make an approximate measure to calculate a player's skill, and for that I had an idea in mind. So imagine you have a player A and a player B. Who is the most skilled? There are several ways to know that, but most of them will be subjective and a completely waste of time if you bring a player C in the picture. My theory is based on a common goal, a number of random challenges and an effort ratio calculation. Of course, you could add styles or difficulty restrictions, but that is totally optional. So if a given number of players are subject to the same experiment, with the same rules, in the end, we could actually be able to compare their skill. My experiment will be based on beating other times, as fast as I can, on 100 random maps. And why? Well, using other times set human goals. 100 random maps provide statistical value and removes luck factors or biased styles. I will then calculate my effort ratio with a simple formula, which means Lower ratio suggests more skill, and vice versa. Two months after I started this experiment, I assure you, I have played the most weird stuff. Playing random maps kept me on the edge of my seat, always worrying if I'd get difficult tech or dirt map. So far, I've faced a wide range of challenges, but surprisingly, the map I struggled with the most was in fact a full speed map, but before we get to that, let's start on the easier side of the spectrum. This was the only map I got the other time at first try, means that I got an effort ratio lower than 1. Then, a few of them I got rather easily, with many effort ratios below 4 but a few pushed just beyond that. Nonetheless, I truly enjoyed some of them, but I was on a mission, and some maps turned into serious challenges, with effort ratios well above 10. On the other hand, a few maps made me question whether I could even beat the other time, and I will show you three of them. 
The first map was a map over one minute long, packed with bounces and jumps, where, to finish, it is required to do an edge bug. This happens when you drive on the edge of a block, causing the car to gain unexpected height, making otherwise impossible jumps suddenly possible. Now imagine you have to get one of these with little setup room and after one minute of race. Well, this was me. But I found another way to finish, and I think I had better odds at it. My strategy was to randomly bounce on the ceiling and get a lucky jump. The second map was a speed tech map, with a good author time. At least for me, a poor tech player. I spent almost one and a half hour to get the author medal, but with commitment, I would eventually get it. And now, the highest effort ratio I got. It was in fact a short full speed map, that required two rum tricks in a row, but the other time was really good. For reference, to get this other time, you would need an 8th place daddy record. It took me almost 40 minutes to get it. Right now, I've completed half the journey. After grinding through 50 random maps, the styles I got the most were tech and lol maps. Definitely not my speciality. To track my progress, I used an Excel sheet that automatically calculated my effort ratio for each map. Once I had enough data, I plotted an histogram to visualize my distribution. The mean effort ratio of my result is 22, meaning that, on average, it takes me 22 times the author time to achieve the author medal on any given map. However, the statistical mode might be even more relevant, as it represents the most frequent occurring ER, giving a clearer picture of my typical performance. But on the other hand, outliers also hold valuable insights. Extreme values reveals how a player performs under challenging conditions, which is crucial when assessing skill. To truly understand what this data means, though, I would need a point of comparison. Only then we could see what these measurable indicators could really represent. While this experiment is providing valuable insights, there are still limitations that could benefit from discussion. What if I can't beat an author time? The effort ratio is assuming that I will eventually get the author medal, but what if I don't? Should there be a cutoff point? Another topic is the track pool bias. The maps I played were randomly selected from TMX, but that doesn't guarantee a balanced representation of styles. To truly assess an all-around skilled player, the track pool should have styles in the same proportion. This theory is a starting point. There's still a lot to refine, but one thing is clear. Measuring skill in Trackmania is more complex than just setting records.